بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم In this lecture of plant metabolism, we will be studying biological nitrogen fixation. In the previous lectures, we have learned about uh, what is nitrogen, why it is required for plant growth, and then we have uh, gone through nitrogen cycle. And in lecture 20, we have uh, a very short portion about rhizobacteria which are the microorganisms responsible for fixation of atmospheric nitrogen. We all know that the earth we breathe is nitrogen. 78% of uh, the air is air consists of nitrogen. However, this nitrogen is not available for plant growth. So this nitrogen is fixed by microorganisms and this fixation process by microorganisms is known as biological nitrogen fixation. So whenever you go or you read biological nitrogen fixation, just remember that this is the association between plant roots and rhizobia bacteria for the fixation of atmospheric nitrogen. There are uh, some relationships known as symbiosis. These are between two different organisms. They can mutually benefit each other or one can get benefit or both can get benefit. Biological nitrogen fixation was discovered by the German agronomist Hermann Hellerigel and Dutch microbiologist Martinus Bijernik. Nitrogen gas is found 78.084% in the atmosphere of our planet called Earth. Nitrogen gas is found in molecular form in the soil such as nitrogen N2. Biological nitrogen fixation is a specific process in which the atmospheric nitrogen is converted to ammonia by an enzyme called nitrogenase. Biological nitrogen fixation is mostly accomplished by microorganisms called diazotrophs or nitrogen fixers. Diazotrophs include some species of bacteria, fungi, bleogleam, algae, cyanobacteria, and lichens, etc. The reaction of that involves biological nitrogen fixation is nitrogen, adenosine triphosphate, hydrogen, and energy. This yields ammonia, hydrogen, adenosine diphosphate, and ionic phosphorus. We have uh, studied the role of nitrogen in detail in the previous lecture 20 where we studied that why nitrogen is necessary. So just for recalling that nitrogen is a part of amino acids which are building block of proteins and proteins are required for cell division. So here it is a major substance in plants next to water. It means that it is second important constituent of plant and have second importance after water. It is the part of chlorophyll, cytochromes, alkalides and many vitamins. Nitrogen plays important role in metabolism, growth, reproduction and heredity of different organisms. So we now undergo or study the types of biological nitrogen fixers. Biological nitrogen fixers are classified based on fixing microorganisms. They are usually two types which are symbiotic and non-symbiotic nitrogen fixers. Symbiotic nitrogen fixers 
fixation of free nitrogen or atmospheric nitrogen by microorganisms living symbiotically inside the plants. The term symbiosis was first introduced by a biologist named D. Barry. Symbiotic nitrogen fixers can be discussed under three different heads. The first one is nodule formation in leguminous plants. Number two is nodule formation in non-leguminous plants and three non-modulation. This means that symbiotic nitrogen fixers fix nitrogen in three different ways. In the first, they form nodule in leguminous plants. Then they form nodules in non-leguminous plants and then no nodulation. Nodule formation in leguminous plants more than 2,500 species of the family Leguminaceae produce root nodules with rhizobium species. Some examples of the plant that belong to botanical family Leguminaceae include Caesar retinum. This is a black gram or gram, pisum, pea, cogenus, and rachis. Rachis is groundnut. They fix nitrogen only inside the root nodules. The association provides food and shelter to the bacteria and the bacteria supply fixed nitrogen to the plants. Nodule may buried in soil even after harvesting and continue nitrogen fixation. Nodule formation in non-leguminous plants. Besides leguminous plants, some other plants are also found to form root nodules. Some examples include Cosarina, Equisetifolia, and Myrica gale, etc. Leaf nodules are also noted in some species of gymnosperms. Non -nodulation, non nodulation so there are some organisms which can fix atmospheric nitrogen into the available form without forming net nodules or without forming root nodules these include lichens such as cyanobacteria and throcheros nostoc Azola, Anabina, and Cycas, Nostoc, and Anabina. Mechanism of root nodule formation. Root nodules form due to infection of rhizobium. Rhizobium bacteria infect the roots and in, in response to infection, nodules are formed in the roots. Free living bacteria growing near the roots of legume are unable to fix nitrogen in free conditions. So, the first condition of nitrogen fixation in leguminous plants is that bacteria must, must, must develop an association with the roots of leguminous plants. Roots of the plants belonging to the leguminaceae family secrete some growth factors help, which help in the fast multiplication of bacteria. For instance, pisum stevum secretes homoserine and carbohydrate containing proteins called lectins over their surface. So the roots of pisum stevum or P secrete homoserine and carbohydrate which contain lactins protein rhizobia are chemotactically attracted to the root hairs when the lactins are secreted on the root hair surface these rhizobia are attracted towards the root hairs 
mediated by lectin some attached root hair cell wall tryptophan is a component of the root hair exudate tryptophan is transformed by rhizobia to indole acetic acid this plant hormone causes the root hair to curl or branch around the attached rhizobia so in this slide uh, we can understand the process of root nodulation either roots secrete some proteins or carbohydrates or they attract these rhizobia through different secretions poly electronase secreted by rhizobia or possibly by the plant depolymerizes and softens cell wall of root hairs as a result rhizobia get entry to the root hair cell the root hair cell nucleus directs the development of infection thread infection thread is a tube consisting of cell membrane and surrounding cellulosic wall the infection thread with time results into formation of nodule tissue infected root cells swell and cause dividing bacteria within the swollen cells change their form to become endosymbiotic bacteria which begin to fix nitrogen so the process is not as simple that bacteria come and they make association so first there are some chemicals which are either secreted by bacteria or plants these secretions depolymerize and soften cell wall of root hairs and after these root hairs are softened rhizobacteria get entry into the cells of root hairs then an infection thread is developed and this infection thread development is necessary for new nodule development infection thread is a tube consisting of cell membrane and surrounding cellulosic cellulosic cell wall the infection thread with time results in the formation of nodule tissues it means that infection is necessary for the development of root nodules here in this picture you can see that how root nodules are developed this is a pea plant then you can see there are root hairs on the roots of the plant rhizobacteria are attached to the root hairs then infection thread is developed through which bacteria enters the root cells and then bacteria change into bacteriaids packed root cells enlarge in in this picture you can see that bacteriaids are red color compounds and then enlarge root cells form a nodule in here you can see root and then nodules this entire picture shows that how nodules are developed just remember that in the first phase bacteria are attracted towards roots or root hairs this is done by chemotactics that is plants or bacteria secrete special chemicals which attract the bacteria towards root when bacteria are attracted towards the root these bacteria are attached to the root hairs once bacteria are attached to the root hairs an infection thread develops and through this infection thread bacteria get entry into the root cells after entering into the root cells these bacteria are converted into bacteriaids and this conversion swells the roots and these swollen roots make root nodules this entire procedure is required for biological nitrogen fixation 
non symbiotic nitrogen fixers non symbiotic nitrogen fixers are also known as free living nitrogen fixers they inhabit both in terrestrial and aquatic conditions fixation carried out by free living microorganisms which are categorized into three different groups such as aerobic anaerobic and blue green algae free living aerobic azotobacter and bigerinia free living anaerobic clostridium and blue green algae are unicellular filamentous ability to fix nitrogen by microorganisms was confirmed by technique acetylene reduction to ethylene it is seen in diazotropic microorganisms the conversion is controlled by an enzymatic complex known as nitrogenous enzyme it reduces the gaseous nitrogen into ammonia and the nitrogen is, is sensitive to biochemistry of nitrogen fixation nitrogen fixers utilize atmospheric nitrogen to synthesize ammonia in this process nitrogen is first split up into free nitrogen atoms by breaking the triple bond with the help of nitrogenase enzyme this reaction is endergonic energy consuming and it requires an input of nearly 160 kcal energy then free energy combines with hydrogen forming ammonia this reaction is exergonic energy releasing mediated by enzyme hydrogenase and it releases nearly 13 kcal energy biological nitrogen fixation requires a net input of 147 kcal energy and expenditure of nearly 16 moles of atp per molecule of nitrogen pathways of nitrogen fixation in the root nodules glucose 6 phosphate acts as an electron donor glucose 6 phosphate is converted to phosphogluconic acid and it dph donates electrons to ferrodoxin protons released and ferrodoxin is reduced reduced ferrodoxin acts as electronic carrier donate electron to ferric protein to reduce it electron released from ferrodoxin thus oxidized reduced ferric protein combines with adenosine triphosphate in the presence of magnesium ions second subunit is activated and reduced it donates electrons to nitrogen to ammonia enzyme set free after complete reduction of nitrogen to ammonia thank you very much